This movie was brought to you by DwayneWright.com, FileMaker Framework Solutions, virtual one-on-one FileMaker training, consulting, and custom design services. For more information, please visit www.DwayneWright.com. So, in our effort to deconstruct a overly complex clients and contacts module, we need to kind of define the landscape as it is, so that uh, we can make our plan and uh, plan our work and work our plan. If uh, if you adhere to that old saying, I sure do or try to. The there's a number of places you can start off at, and I'm not sure that's you know, there's really, for the FileMaker developer, if there was any real strong reason to start one over the other, you can look at functionality, you can look at schema. Ultimately, you have to look at both of them and then compare uh, them back and forth. So let's just quickly take a look at what our schema cost is. How much schema do we have inside of the client's contacts module? And the reason I say clients and contacts, because in this uh, setting, a client could have multiple contacts within an organization and the database tracks that accordingly. Now just looking at this form view and the layout, we can tell we have a lot going on. We have a, a, a number of buttons that come across. To get, if we ever try to do a, a UI change, that's going to be a technical cost that we're going to have to do. We have multiple tabs, a, a top and a bottom tab, and within these we have tabs within tabs, so do we really need all these types of things? Um, we do have, uh, let's go ahead and take a look, go into layout mode, and then go ahead and take a look. And again, we kind of use the anchor buoy mentality. We can see we have you know, a decent number of client um, layouts and a decent number of contact layouts. So that's a bit of, uh, of an overhead to take a look at. If we look at the scripts, and again, those are kind of organized the same way. Anchor buoy, where you know the folder is the anchor, and the buoys are the elements within that folder. Um, we can see that we do have a, a number of client uh, scripts, and we have one that's called like client top buttons. So that would be like all the buttons at the top. So if we drill down. You can see that we have multiple routines broken into the same script, but they are grouped by or differentiated by a script parameter. So when it hits that script parameter, it performs that part of the script and the rest of it's not. So it's a way of centralizing your scripts. And this was done before uh, we had, or a good part of this coding was done before we had folders for scripts. So this was kind of my way of organizing scripts into a, a group. And it's still a decent uh, idea, but uh, not as uh, necessary now that we have uh, script folders. And then we do have a decent number of, of contacts, so we, we, we probably have about 15 some odd scripts and about 15 layouts to look at. And then let's go ahead and take a look at our um, manage the database screen. And so in the client's module, you have about 115 or 118 fields. So and we're looking at, hey, there's a bunch of calculations for reports and stuff like that. Would there be an opportunity to streamline that down? And in the context, we have 27 fields. Not not a whole lot, you know, uh, overhead there. I mean, you have, you have to have X number of stuff just to track a contact. And let's take a look at the relationship graph. So let's do our type ahead, jump over to our clients module. And yeah, yeah, we got we got a decent number of um, TOs there. They are organized real well. We have a great naming convention, so we know where they go to, and we do have that sometimes those extensions underneath there. So we we do have a decent number of, of client relationships that go across, and our contacts is right below it. And again, the contacts does not have that much uh, overhead that goes across because the, the client is the main focus of most CRM packages, you know, the C being, you know, client or customer. So we know that we have opportunities to optimize and from a schema standpoint, the next thing would be to do is to take a look at it from a functionality standpoint.
So we've looked at the schema. Now let's look at the other half of the equation, which is the functionality of these two modules, clients and contacts, and how they work together. Then our ultimate goal later on would be to look at them both side to side and see where we can keep functionality uh, that makes sense, but yet reduce schema overhead for our new solution. So the client's module, the idea is that it could be a company that has both a shipping and billing address information, and it could have a sales rep and be used in marketing type of things. The idea of this module was that the top tab you'd have the address information, uh, basic payment information that flows to an invoice, and then there was a related record overview which was kind of giving you a summary of the dashboard actions and we'll get to that in just a second. Uh, underneath there we have a, a general overview and the here's where the contacts come into play. A particular client could have multiple contacts that you want to keep track of within the organization. An organization could have alternate addresses that you need to keep track of. And the sales rep field, the idea was that is that from the client's module, there could be a series of fields that the sales rep uses for their own tracking type of thing. Say a, a sales rep has a particular territory, this client's in their territory, they want to track specific stuff just for their business. Inside of here, they could actually put in a label for a field and put in data, then use it for searches and filters and that type of thing. Then we had a, a series of buttons down here that were more dashboard actions about a particular client. So inside the sales marketing area, you could see that these are the sales that you had set up for them. These are the products that they had purchased on those invoices. These are the sales orders that may have later on turned into invoices. Uh, these are the quotes that could have turned into sales orders, which could have then become uh, actually invoices because an order and an invoice are two different things because a order could have 20 items on it and encompass two invoices. One of them has you know, the first 15 items is shipped in stock and then the, the remainder shipped at a later date when you know those items came in. And then proposals may be um, against somewhat like a quote except for a proposal could have um, more you know verbal information it could have a service element to it it could talk about timelines it could be used more for project management and then the the campaign is indeed a project uh, where you'd have an overcompensating activity within its subtasks that need to be done to track for a particular client and that was all underneath the sales marketing tab. And then in the customer satisfactions, you have credits that you have given them. Uh, you have returns where they actually return goods and services. And then you have it where you can track the support calls that go across. Now, in the correspondence module, we had where uh, events, events and correspondence, this would be tracking all the emails that you would uh, foster from the system. These could be the events, which again would could be linked to the campaigns. These are events that goes into the campaign, so these are the specific events that were tagged for that particular customer. They could also be meetings or that type of thing. And then this is written correspondence going back and forth. Immediately right now you're saying, okay, boy, I really need to track that here. Possibly not. Uh, time cards, again, if you are in a service-oriented business, time cards could be specific to that particular client or not. So the idea is that if you are a billing type of service, any of your employees that would bill out uh, their time, which could later become you know, part of an invoice, but this just specifically shows the start and end time that they were at a particular uh, activity for a client and how it was billed. And then inside of that time card, you had some filtering options, which would show all the time cards, time cards between the start and end date, time cards that have not been invoiced yet, and time cards that just have been invoiced. And then going even farther, we had the, the linking to the media files and some of the website actions for it. So here you can actually see if FileMaker stores documents like contracts or media files or something for a particular client, it can be tagged inside of the database so you can quickly go down to them. Uh, if the website has been defined in the address information, 
this web viewer would show it up. And then based upon the address that's listed on in there, you can see the Google Maps or the, the MapQuest address for those sites. And then finally, the background would be an auditing type of um, feature. It could show, you know, who has made a modification on the field, what date, what's the original value, and what its changed value would be. And then this is basically a comments wrap-up of the comments in, uh, throughout the solution. And then the customization is just an area where, you know, you could put some other type of thing in. Now that's just the functionality of the layout. Then we actually would have up at the top where we use custom menus. So all the regular FileMaker-ish type of layout or menu options that normally would be up there have been wrapped underneath in general. Now these are client specific modules. So as you navigate from like clients to contacts, you can see a contact has its own special, you know, area. So let's go ahead and go back to clients. And then we just have an overall pull down navigation so we don't have to have a ton of buttons. Um, we have save searches. And again, you can see, well, maybe that's not even as relevant now that uh, that could be an embedded FileMaker action. These are reports that are would perform most likely a search and a grouping and a presentation, possibly a printout, save as PDF or save as Excel action. And then these are just default FileMaker stuff. And then um, also in the layout, I guess I did mention, but we have a standard button bar up here for that will be constant throughout them, new record find mode. And then the lower button bar would mean that I would be creating related records based upon the context of this client. So I'd be creating a new event, a new email, a new invoice, sales order quote, that type of thing. This is all the functionality that uh, uses the schema with inside of this you know, very robust uh, solution. And if we look at the contacts, it's going to be quite a bit easier, but it, it again has that same button bar, some of the linking. Um, some basic this is actually redundant from what is inside of there so that might be replaced and then this is just pulling from the client information again you can see events that were linked to just the client not just the company but when you would create it from the client and it's linked to the company the company would write shotgun data so it goes across time charge to a uh, client v card data if you wanted to export this out to put into like an iphone batch emails Actions, media files linked just to that client, and then the background tab. So, very, very robust. And you know, the decision is well, what do I keep and what do I pitch? Do you have questions or comments about the video you just saw? Please feel free to email me at info at Thank you.